Okay. So for today, we will be discussing types of liars. Um, when we were still studying college, originally, walo lang ang naituro sa amin. So yun talaga yung ginagamit natin, walo. But upon my research, may makita akong ibang terms na pwede rin maging part ng mga types of liars. So mas mabuti ng sobra yung madiscuss natin kesa kulang, di ba? Okay, so there are various ways of classifying lies by their consequences, by the importance of their subject matters, by the speaker's motives, and by the nature or context of the utterance. Yung pagsasabi na uh, kasinungalingan na yun. Perhaps the most usual way to classify lies is by the people who tell them. Understanding lies and liars can help us avoid getting duped as well as protect us from drifting into dishonesty ourselves, especially kung magiging interrogator or investigator kayo in the future, you always, uh, one of the best qualities that you should possess is being an honest uh, officer. Hindi lang during interrogation and investigation, kung hindi, sa lahat ng aspects ng career ninyo. And maybe hindi nga lang sa career, pati sa buhay ninyo, di ba? Honesty is the best policy, sabi nila. Okay, so ito yung una kong nahanap. Uh, there are four types of lies, sabi niya. Being deceitful, delusional, duplicitous, and demoralized. So this diagram is a taxonomy of liars based on plotting their lies along two axes, their intended audiences, and their subject matters. Okay. So, yeah. so, people can lie to two kinds of audiences, to other people or themselves. So, magsisinungaling ka lang sa dalawang tao, sa sarili mo o sa ibang tao, and they can lie about two different kinds of things, facts and their values. We all know what it looks like when people lie about facts, but how does one lie about their values? So, what are values anyway? So, according to Ross Harris, author of The Happiness Trap, Values are how we intend to be, what we, what we want to stand for, and how we want to relate to the world around us. So values are attributes of the person you want to become. Ano yung mga katangian na gusto mong uh, maipakita sa ibang tao na meron ka. So yun yung values. To state your values in the here and now is to commit yourself to being or doing certain things in the future. For example, we might state our values include being a faithful spouse, a person who lives healthfully, or an adventurous individual. What we mean is that who we are and what we do in the future will have been shaped by our adherence to these precepts. And kung ano ang magiging tayo in the future is how we are molded today. Okay. So, pinagsama-sama ko na lahat dito, this, uh, mga types of liars. Deceitful, duplicitous, delusional, demoralized. etong apat is specifically uh, the types of liars uh, according to their values. And then we also have compulsive, frequent, occasional, smooth, pathological, intentional, manipulative, protective, avoidant, impressive, lazy, and tactful liars. Kalaan niyo, may tactful liar, di ba? Okay, dito wala tayo sa values. Deceitful liars. So those who lie to others about facts. A deceitful type of liar insincerely gesturing a heart symbol with his hand. O oh, yan. Puso-puso pa siya, pero sinungaling naman. Diba? Pinaasa ka niya. Ay, may ganun. Lying to others about facts is prototypical lying. We've all done it. Children learn to lie around age three. And researchers believe it's part of normal human brain development. Lying requires learning to see things from other people's perspectives, developing what psychologists call theory of mind. Learning to tell an effective lie means getting into the other person's head or order to tell them what they want to hear. So, nabanggit nga dyan, na bata pa lang, three years old, doon natututong magsinungaling ang bata. Alam niyo naman yung mga... Uh, kasi nungalingan ng mga bata, di ba? 
sirong nagsira nito, sabi ng nanay. Tapos walang iimik. O kaya sasabihin ng bata, yung kapatid niya, yung kuya niya, yung ate niya. Kahit hindi naman. <laughs> Ayun. Yung mga ganong klaseng lies. So fortune teller gets into her client's head in order to tell them what they want. Here. So sasabihin mo kung ano yung gustong marinig ng ibang tao. Kasi minsan, ang tao, kapag sinabihan mo ng facts, ayaw niyang tanggapin. In denial siya, hindi, hindi totoo yan. Babait tong taong to eh, kaya hindi to. Hindi ako lolokoy nito, hindi mo sisinungaling ka sa akin. Pero kapag sinabi mo na, um, oo, mabait yan. Uh, mabuting tao yan, hindi talaga sinungaling yan. Matutuwa yung ibang tao, di ba? So may mga ganun. The good news is that we tend to grow out of telling childish lies for purely personal gain. For the most part, of course, Uh, hindi sa lahat ng pagkakataon, ganun tayo. O ganun din yung iba sa atin. We will, we will still tell white lies as adults to maintain social relationships. For example, pangit yung tao. Talagang nuknukan siya ng kapangitan. Pero sinabi mo, okay ka naman eh. Maganda ka rin naman minsan. <laughs> yung mga ganun, white lies para maging Magkaibigan pa rin kayo, hindi masisira yung relationship ninyo. And yeah, to maintain social relationships. When was the last time someone greeted you with, how are you? And you responded with, how you really felt? You likely said, great or fine. Sinabi mo, uh, okay lang ako, mabuti naman. Pero dami mo parang problema. So even if you were having an awful day, this sort of dishonesty is expected. Yes, it is technically deceitful, but Since both parties know you're not supposed to respond with any substantive truth, you do it anyway. Two unhappy people greeting each other in the rain, uh, telling white lies about how their day is going. Yon isang uri ng pagiging deceitful liar yon. So imagine what would happen if you responded instead. Well, the world is falling apart. I'm starting to question the purpose of my existence, and I'm feeling bloated from the kale. Salad ay eight. Yung sabi mo, magda-diet ka na. Pero, hindi uh, mo naman talaga gusto yung kilakain mo. Pero okay lang ako. Okay lang. Pero ikaw, kapas na ka. Ganon naman ang usual response natin. So in games like poker, yan. Uh, being a skillful liar can help you win. In politics, knowing how and when to lie, can also be an advantage. So white lies aside, lying to others about facts for personal gain is corrosive to relationships. And if it's a consistent pattern of behavior, uh, can shut us out of people's lives. Kaya nga, di ba, yung ibang tao, ayaw nila sa mga taong prangka. Kasi kapag prangka, honest yun eh, hindi lang talaga maganda ang pagkakadeliver. Pero sasabihin niya yung totoo, yung tingin niyang totoo. Pangit na ba ng damit mo? Para kang tanga. <laughs> yung mga ganun. Pero, uh, yung mga ganun tao, hindi natin gusto. Kasi nga, they tell us the truth. They tell us things we don't want to hear. So, door with a sign indicating no liars are allowed entry. Uh, habitual liars get labeled as untrustworthy and earn a bad reputation that often, that often precedes them. Especially in our hyper-connected age. Whether it's checking out someone to date or do business with, our online profiles and social connections increasingly help people keep tabs on our character. Uh, so social media, usually, ang mga pinapost natin, yung mga magagandang bagay lang. Nyari, yung sweet kayo ng jowa mo. Pero kapag nag-aaway kayo, nagpo-post ka ba sa lahat ng pagkakataon? Hindi naman, di ba? Kasi nga, You you want to show people um, good things lang, but the bad things you don't want to to inform other people. Kaya nga ito. social connections increasingly help people keep tabs on our character. Inform sila kung ano ka ba talaga. Okay, next is duplicitous liar. Um, duplicate, double. Ibig sabihin dalawa. Those who lie to others about their values, person whose true face is hidden behind a smiling mask, a duplicitous type of liar yun. 
kaya katulad dyan sa picture, mayroon siyang maskara na masaya siya, di ba? People can lie about their values just as they can lie about facts. They say they are committed to being someone or doing something, but their actions prove otherwise. So, duplicitous comes from the Latin word for twofold or double, and that and that is why we call this sort of liar two-faced. You're a two-faced liar. Sa English era ka. Lying about values can be even more corrosive to relationships than lying about facts. When I state a commitment to being faithful or heart helpful or loving, I position myself as a certain type of person. Ako, mapagmahal ako. Hindi, hindi kita lolokohin. Mamatay man. I am telling people what kind of person I am now and in the future. So they can count on me to act in certain ways. So woman talking about her exercise routine when in fact she has been watching TV in her slippers. Oh, every day ako nag-exercise eh. Kaya nga ganito yung katawan ko eh. Pero yung totoo, hindi ka naman talaga nag-exercise. Some of the most important decisions in people's lives are guided by this confidence. Decisions to spend time with someone, to love them, to make sacrifices for them, to trust them with our money, our children, our careers, or our opinion. Lying about our values undermines this basic trust. Kasi diba, kaya mo, in relationships, kaya mo nagugusta ng isang tao because not only of the looks, pero be honest, diba? Gusto, tingnan din natin yung itsura. But usually, uh, we decide uh, with whom we spend the rest of our lives based on the, the values of the other person and yours kung nagmamatch kayo. So yun. Kung hindi, kung may ipinakita siya, ganito ang values ko. So tinanggap mo siya kasi nga, ganda daw yung values niya. Tapos kalauna na pag, pag alaman mo, hindi naman pala ganun. So uh, the trust will be broken. Lying about values compromises people's abilities to make informed decisions because it limits their view of what the future has to offer. If you trust me, you are likely to adjust your behavior based on what I say. Diba? Kapag sinabi ko, ako, ayoko yung mga uh, hindi naliligo. Ako, ayoko yung mga hindi naliligo. Tapos sinabi mo, ako, everyday ako naliligo. But, in fact, hindi ka naman talaga naliligo every day. Pag iisipan mo lang. Pag may klase ka lang dito sa AUF, gano'n. Uh, so, yung tao, kung kanina mo sinasabi, mag adjust siya sa pagtrato niya, sa pagturing niya sa'yo, base sa kung ano yung sinabi mo sa kanya. Okay. If I encourage you to invest in a particular stock or discourage you from applying for a particular job, you will choose to limit your future options based on my advice. You'll forego other investment opportunities or forego the one job in favor of others. In the same way, if people trust you, trust that you have the values you say, they'll forego other opportunities to invest their time and attention Elsewhere, because they're confident, you'll remain the person you say you are. Kaya nga, di ba, kapag nakapag-relasyon uh, ka, kung naranasan niya na, kasi, di ko sure. Um, if you commit to a person, then, lahat ng ibang manliligaw mo, siguro meron ka pang isa't kalahating manliligaw, hindi mo napapansinin. O kaya, kung nag-commit ka na, may... Uh, ano to? Kapag nag-commit ka na, may hindi ka naman liligaw sa iba. ba? Diba? Kasi nga, nag-invest ka na doon sa taong yun. Hindi ka nakahanap ng iba. As in the case of lying about facts, the information age places limits on how long someone can sustain lying about their values. When it becomes evident that there is a disconnect between someone's professed values and their actions, it is difficult to trust their word ever again. Okay, for example, politicians. Sa pangangapan niya, good sila. Ang dami nilang pangako, ang dami nilang tinasabing galuhin nila. Pero kapag nakaupo na sila sa pwesto, yon, Di mo na sure kung tutuparin niya ba lahat yun. At pag nakita mong hindi niya ginawa yung mga pinangako niya, then mahirapan ka ng pagtiwalaan siya. So sa sunod na eleksyon, kung tatakbo pa siya ulit, magdadalawang isip ka na maboto kung pa ba to? Ah, 
Okay, another is delusional liars. So, people who lie to themselves about facts. So, kilala nyo siguro si Pinocchio, yung character na humahaba ang ilong kapag nagsisinungaling. At napag-alaman din natin sa first sa very first part ng lesson natin na yung Pinocchio syndrome is not true na kapag nagsisinungaling, kinakamot niya yung ilong niya. So, yan. Uh, it's not just other people we lie to. We also lie to ourselves. You might tell yourself that your hurt response to someone wasn't insensitive. Hindi hmm, naman nakaka-offend yung sinabi ko. Okay lang naman yun. Pero sa iba, uh, baka offensive na yun. Or that you didn't take more than your fair share of dessert. Sakto lang naman yung ate nung cake eh. Pero yung kinuha mo, mas madami. Yan, nagsisiro ka lang sa sarili mo. Or that you contributed more to the team project than you did. Dami kong ginawa sa project na to. Dami ko kayang ambag, pero yung naambag mo, mga around 2% lang. We constantly lie to ourselves and there's more, and there's reason to think that healthy psychological functioning involves some level of self-deception. Pero healthy naman daw yun. However, not all self-deception is created equal. There's a difference between the commonplace lying that mentally healthy people engage in and the kind of self-deception that marks mental illnesses like schizophrenia or manic depression. There's also a difference between certain types of self-deception and lies that erode our integrity. Uh, in his novel, The Brothers Karamazov, the Stovsky wrote, Above all, don't lie to yourself. The man who lies to himself and listens to his own lie comes to a point that he cannot distinguish the truth within him or around him and so loses all respect for himself and for others. Kapag nasanay ka ng nagsisinungaling, Uh, kapag patuloy mong sinasabi ang isang kasinungalingan, kalaunan, eventually, maniniwala ka na dun. Ha, ito yung totoo. Kahit na, hindi naman talaga. Dahil lang paulit-ulit mo siyang sinasabi, paulit-ulit mo siyang ginagawa, naniwala ka na, napaniwala mo na yung sarili mo na totoo nga yung kasinungalingan na yun. So why do people lie to themselves? What motivates us to distort facts in our own heads? The motives for self-deceit are various. Madaming dahilan. They include insulating ourselves from uncomfortable truths and convincing ourselves of comfortable ones. Humiliated spouses try to convince themselves that their partners aren't really cheating. O yan. Para sa mga naloko na, meron na ba? May nagkajowa na ba sa inyo? Ayun. So kung naloko na kayo, sa una, hindi ka pa maniniwala. Hindi, hindi totoo yan. Hindi magagawa sa akin yan. Pero, naghahanap ka na lang ebidensya. Na, naghahanap ka ng ebidensya either para mapatunayan na ikaw yung tama o yung kasinungalingan yung tama. Uh, mediocre players try to convince themselves that they're really vital to the team. Many of us try to convince ourselves we're more likable, better looking, less biased, and more competent than we really are. Mas magaling naman ako dyan. Mas, mas maganda ako dyan. Ayun, mga ganun. Lying to ourselves can also be a way of reconciling contradictory beliefs. Psychologists call the uncomfortable state of holding two conflicting ideas cognitive dissonance. For instance, let's say you meet members of a doomsday cult. The devotees profess to you and everyone they know that they are absolutely certain the world is going to end in 30 days. They are so sure Armageddon is night that they quit their jobs, sell everything they own, and do everything their cult leader says. Yung mga ganun. Uh, 30 days pass and thankfully the world doesn't end. Parang yung movie na 2012. Mali daw pala yun. 2021 pala daw dapat yun. Dyslexic daw kasi yung gumawa ng film. But now, the cult members have a big problem. What will they do the, the day after the world was supposed to have ended? The cult members believe with all their hearts that the world would end. But it obviously didn't. Would they renounce their beliefs on the spot? Throw up their hands and say, oh, Our bad, let's go get a Starbucks? Not likely. So, hindi naman pwedeng ganun. Ay, sorry, mali. <laughs> mali pala. 
300 years pala, hindi 30 days. In the 1956 book, When Prophecy Fails, social psychologist Leon First Festinger and his colleagues described their study of a small group called the Seekers. The group believed in a UFO religion and professed with other certainty that the world would end in a great flood on December 21, 1954. Well, 2022 na. When midnight struck and no cataclysm occurred, the group sat in stunned silence. Then someone realized a clock was five minutes late. Oops, they sat awkwardly for a few minutes longer awaiting imminent destruction. Obviously, nothing happened. After four hours of nervous silence, something finally did happen. The group leader announced she received a message from an alien planet that told her the little group sitting all night long had spread so much light that God had saved the world from destruction. Along saying you doing? So clearly, the group members needed to believe a story to help them escape the fact. So obvious naman na hindi totoo yung pinagsasabi doon sa cult na yun. Doon sa, uh, ano to? yung mga UFO beings na yun. Uh, nung sinabing, ay may pinag-chat sa akin, hindi daw pala tuloy. Cancel, sabi ni God. <laughs> hindi, walang ganun. So, uh, being as cult members, dahil naniwala nga kayo, nagtiwala kayo doon sa leader ninyo, hahanap kayo ng dahilan para paniwalaan pa rin siya. So, lying to themselves was easier than admitting they were wrong all along. Lying to oneself about an apocalypse that didn't happen is silly, but the ability of for self-deception can at times be a surprisingly valuable asset. Steve Jobs, for instance, was said to have a reality distortion field that gave him the power to mysteriously manipulate others into working on seemingly impossible tasks and timelines. By getting others to believe in his version of reality, they sometimes put their doubts aside and took his confidence on faith. Basta nagtiwala lang sila dun sa uh, mga sinasabi ni Steve Jobs na uh, kaya niya yan, kaya niyong gawin ng imposible kahit sa maikling panahon, magagawa niyo yung task ninyo. According to his former publicist, uh, when you worked with Steve Jobs, everything that seemed impossible, he made possible, or he made you make it possible, which was even more important. But in a sense, he was a good leader. Diyan sa sense na yan. Diyan sa circumstance na yan. Kasi napaniwala niya kayo na kaya niyong gawin ang isang bagay na parang sobrang hirap o na parang imposible. At uh, eventually, when you become successful, successful with it, then mapapakita lang na hindi hindi siya totally bad lie. ba? Diba? Kasi yun nga, del- delusional liar yun. Yung taong yun. So Job's mind-melting superpower included his ability to manipulate his own beliefs as much as others. All the great ent- entrepreneurs I've met have the power to activate their own reality distortion fields. How else does someone convince people it's a good idea to invest money or their career into a crazy business idea? So Steve Jobs meditating, emanating a reality distortion field. Unfortunately, all the world, all the worst of entrepreneurs also have this capability. Theranos founder and Jobs wannabe Elizabeth Holmes allegedly used her reality distortion field like a Jedi master of confabulation. In politics, religion, and business, having a vision can motivate recruits, converts, and customers. And while our conscience makes it difficult to lie to others, self-deception resolves cognitive dissonance by distorting our own view of reality. If we believe With enough fervor, we can motivate ourselves and others to create the future. So, hindi naman siya totally bad. Di ba? Kasi ka, kung meron kang vision at naipaliwanag mo sa iba yung vision na yun, napaniwala mo sila, then maganda yun, pabor yun para sa'yo. Di ba? The difference between a prophet and a false prophet is not necessarily who is telling the truth. 
Hindi yun ang usapan kung sino ang nagsasabi ng totoo. But rather, who is better at convincing themselves and others to work at making their vision a self-fulfilling prophecy. Parang sa korte, hindi sa lahat ng pagkakataon yung nagsasabi ng totoo ang nananalo. Kasi ang usapan doon, ebidensya. So kung sino ang mas nakapagpresenta ng uh, maayos, tama, honest na ebidensya, sila yung most likely to win. Okay, and last dito sa uh, values are demoralized liars. Those who lie to themselves about their values. They, the type of person who lies to themselves about their values. People deceive themselves about their values for many of the same reasons. They deceive themselves about facts. Among other things, they want to see themselves as more diligent, honest, and trustworthy than they really are. They say they are committed to working hard, telling the truth, or keeping promises, but their actions say otherwise. The pitfalls of lying about values are similar to those of lying about facts, but there is an added snare. Lying to ourselves about values compromises our integrity. Kaya nga, Honesty is really the best policy because if you always tell the truth, if you are also honest with yourself, then you will be, uh, you'll have great integrity. Kasi kung nagsisinungaling ka, wala kang integrity. It will compromise it. So the word integrity has its roots in the Latin word integritas, meaning intact. Intact. It describes a whole that isn't weakened or compromise. A crack in a foundation compromises the integrity of a building. Diba? Kapag hindi maayos yung pundasyon ng isang building, um, may chance na masira yung building na gumuho siya. A crack in the hull compromises the integrity of a ship. Kapag may crack din sa isang barko, then nagiging unsafe ang isang barko. So, baka lumubog yan. When the integrity of a hull is compromised, Parts of it are divided from each other and the whole is weaker as a result. A building is more likely to collapse, a ship to sink. Diba? Kaya nga, hindi maganda na nagsinungaling ka kahit konti. Kasi ang resulta nun, yung konti na yun ay lalaki. Diba? Dadami. Uh, minsan ka lang nagsinungaling, makakasanayan mo yan. Minsan ka lang nagnakaw, makakasanayan mo yan. Nagnanakaw ka na ng tuloy-tuloy, magiging profession mo na yun. Magiging career mo na yun. So, a muscular man with wobbly legs signifying a compromised goal. When we lie to ourselves about our values, we are introducing a division within ourselves. If we are insincere in our stated commitments, or if we fail to follow through on them, we created a rift in our lives, either between our worlds and our intentions, or between our current intentions and our future actions. Either way, marks a failure, either failing to act how we believe best, or failing to embrace the values that are best in fact. The implication in either case is that we don't fully respect ourselves. Kasi nga, hindi ka palaging nagsasabi ng totoo. At kahit na, at pag hindi ka nagsasabi ng totoo sa sarili mo, then hindi mo nare-respect sa sarili mo. If you tell something honest about others, then you also respect them. You show them respect. So either we don't take our value seriously or we don't take our actions seriously. The same is true of other of the people we are now and the people we will become in the future. Kaya nga nabanggit natin kanina na uh, kung papaano tayo na mold ngayon, magiging ganun tayo in the future. Recall that our values are a way of shaping our future, at least those aspects of it in our control. So when we say we're committed to being diligent, honest, and trustworthy, we're saying our future selves will be structured by these commitments and that the future will be in 5, 10, or 20 years from now won't differ in these respects from the people we are today. I remember, kasi nag ROTC din ako, pero hindi dito sa AUF. Sa dati kong school, ano kasi ako eh, uh, nag-shift lang ako. So sa dati kong school, army kami doon. At uh, 
dahil nag-officer ako, uh, alam niyo, sa paraan ng pag-upo, ewan ko kung ginagawa niyo ito ngayon, ginagawa, ginawa niyo ito nung nag-ROTC kayo, kung nag-officer kayo. Kapag upong fourth class, one fourth lang. Kung ito ang, kung ito ang upuan, upo mo, yung quick mo nandito lang. Upong one, upong fourth class yan, one fourth lang. Kapag third class ka na, uh, mga two fifth na, Kapag second class ka na, pwede nang kalahat eh. Pag first class ka na, ayan, pwede ka nang humiga. Ganon. Kapag nasa ibang bahay ako, ganon pa rin ako. Hindi ko rin mapigilan. <laughs> na parang kunyari, o kaya ako yung pinakabata sa isang lugar. Parang hindi ako sanay na uupo ako at full yung buong pwet ko nakaupo. <laughs> ganon pa rin. Kasi nga, uh, that's one way how we show respect or that's one way how we uh, address people na, sige po, sir, kayo, upo po kayo ng buo, kasi senior ko po kayo, ako po, okay na po akong ganito, one port lang. Ganon. Ayo. That's how we were trained. So, kung, yun nga, kung paano kayo na mood ngayon, that's how you'll be in the future. Ganyo, kailan pa ba ako nag-ROTC? 2009. So, ilang years na ang lumipas. Garo pa rin ako umupo. Kaya nakasanayan ko na. Although, take note din ha, ilang months lang din ako nag-officer. Ayun. So, if you are used to telling lies now, makakasanayan mo yan. Hanggang pagtanda mo, hanggang magkapamilya ka, hanggang magkaapo ka na, sanay ka ng ganyan. Kaya hindi siya maganda. Failing to live into our stated commitments, kapag may sinabi tayong, eto yung gagawin natin kapag hindi natin ginawa yun, uh, disrupts the continuity between our current values and our future lives. If our actions don't line up with our commitments, then either who we are today or who we become tomorrow represents a failure. Either our future fails to hit the target our current values are aiming at or our current values fail to aim at the right future target. Whichever it is, we can't look at ourselves, either the people we are or the people will become without witnessing a miss. So our integrity or lack thereof impacts not just our own lives, but others too. Kasi nga, nabanggit natin kanina, pati madadala mo yan hanggang sa magkapamilya ka. Siyempre, pag nagkapamilya ka, dahil pinapractice mo yun, maipapasa mo pa yun sa mga anak mo, sa mga apo mo. Diba? Hindi maganda. It's hard to respect people who don't respect themselves. As we've seen, failing to live with integrity is a way of disrespecting ourselves. It's also hard to trust the word of people who don't take their own word seriously or to entrust responsibility to people who don't respect their own agency. Okay. Other types of liars. Hindi na ito sa values related, ha? So first are compulsive liars. These people lie when there is no need for them to even to even bullet. These people lie when there is no need for them uh, to even if it makes more sense to tell the truth than to lie. Kung baga parang matik sa kanila, kailangan niya magsinungaling, kailangan niya hindi sabihin yung totoo. Kahit na mas madali sabihin ang totoo. Compulsive nga eh, di ba? Uh, parang ang dating din niya mapigilan matik nga sa kanya compulsive liars are addicted to lying and it is simply hard for them to stop then we also have frequent liars frequent liars go about their lives lying in every step of the way these people don't even try to cover their tracks or make sure their lies make sense basta kabod lang siyang magsisilungaling Eh, parang walang connect-connect yung mga pinagsasabi niya. Basta siya magsisinungaling siya. Frequent liars yan. Everyone knows these people are lying since they are sloppy with their lies. May pinagkwentuhan siyang isa. Tapos may pinagkwentuhan pa siyang isa. Same story pero magkaiba yung pagkakadeliver. O yun, frequent liar yun. Alam mo nang sinungaling yung mga ganun tao. Magkakaiba ang kwento. And then, we also have... Occasional liars. So, an occasional liar seldom lies. Kasi nga, occasional lang pag may occasion na. However, once they do, they feel guilty for their actions. These people are those who ask for forgiveness right away from the person they lied to. And then, we have smooth liars. 
smooth liars are exactly how their description sounds. These are the people who have already become very skilled and, and smooth at telling lies. Suabe, yung pagkaka sabi niya na kasinungalingan. Kaya parang totoo. They are so good that most of the time you cannot even tell that they are lying. Hindi mo na ma-distinguish legit ba tong sinasabi niya o binobola lang ako nito. 